No sunlight has ever shown here. The bottom of the Mariana Trench is about 35,876 feet, 10,935 meters deep, making it deeper than Mount Everest is tall. The deepest part of the ocean is found in the crescent-shaped Mariana Trench, located in the western Pacific Ocean. But what is the deepest point of the Mariana Trench? The Mariana Trench is about 1,580 miles long and located to the east of the Mariana Islands, which give the trench its name, according to the University of Washington. The deepest spot in the Mariana Trench is a valley called the Challenger Deep, located at the Mariana Trench's southern end, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. According to NOAA, the Challenger Deep extends about 35,876 feet below the surface. That makes it about 7,000 feet deeper than Mount Everest is tall, NOAA noted. NOAA's estimate comes from a 2021 study in the journal Deep Sea Research Part 1, Oceanographic Research Papers, based on data from a 2020 voyage. However, there are many other estimates of the depths of the Challenger Deep. The first crewed mission there in 1960 returned an estimate of 35,797 feet, according to Guinness World Records. Since then, recent estimates have included 36,069 feet and 36,036 feet. Why is estimating the depth of the Challenger Deep so challenging? Fundamentally, it is difficult because it is so deep, CM Dr. Sam Greenaway of the NOAA Corps and lead author of the 2021 study told Live Science. To measure ocean depths using modern instruments, scientists basically have two options. Sonar mounted on a ship on the ocean surface, or a pressure sensor deployed on the seabed that can help gauge how much water lies above it, Greenaway said. Sonar beams from multi-beam echo sounders can produce complete coverage of the seabed, said Greenaway. The marine operations lead on NOAA's new ship construction team. As good as they are, the ship systems are really far from the seabed which limits both the horizontal and vertical accuracy of the measurement. For instance, with the Challenger Deep, it takes sound about 14 seconds to go down to the seabed and back, and the salinity, temperature, and pressure of the water can affect the speed and path the sound takes, Greenaway said. As a result, the vertical accuracy of an echo sounder measurement is about 80 feet, 25 m, he noted. With a pressure sensor, building a pressure gauge that is accurate enough at such high pressures is quite challenging. Greenaway said, on the floor of the Challenger Deep, the pressure is more than 1,000 times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level, Guinness World Records noted. After that, we need to correct for the density of the water above the sensor, the gravity pulling that water down, the pressure of the atmosphere and tides, Greenaway noted. Deploying a pressure sensor to the right place is a bit of a trick too. To make their measurements, Greenaway and his colleagues dropped a pressure sensor on the seafloor to serve as a benchmark for their echo sounder readings. The uncertainty of the pressure sensor dominated our overall uncertainty, but instrument manufacturers are making great progress on improving these sensors, so I expect this component of the uncertainty might improve substantially in the future, he said. The surfaces of both Mars and the Moon are mapped to a greater resolution and accuracy than the bottom of the ocean is. Greenaway said in a Reddit post, I have spent most of my career working with various aspects of seafloor mapping, he told Live Science. I think it is surprising to many people just how much of that mapping work remains to be done. In practical terms, the difference of the Challenger, deep being 10,935 meters deep as we determined, or 10,984 meters, as a recent mapping campaign estimated, doesn't really matter that much, Greenaway said. However, the idea that we need to go out and measure the depth of the world's oceans is really important. For instance, such research can help with the precise positioning of underwater vehicles, as well as with pressure sensors that help monitor water level fluctuations due to climate change, he said. The depth is also important to deep sea explorers. On March 26, 2012, Filmmaker James Cameron dove 35,787 feet in the Deep Sea Challenger submersible vessel into the oceanic trench, setting the record for the deepest solo dive. In 2019, explorer and businessman Victor Vescovo made the deepest dive on record, 
at 35,853 feet into the Pacific Ocean. Vescovo worked with deep sea specialists, including Captain Don Walsh, an oceanographer with the U.S. Navy who is known for diving with Swiss oceanographer and engineer Jacques Picard to the Challenger Deep on January 23, 1960. They became the first people to reach the deepest part of the ocean at about 35,814 feet. What is at the bottom of the Mariana Trench? At the bottom of the Mariana Trench, the pressure exceeds 1,000 atmospheres, which is enough to crush all but the most robust submersibles. It would kill an unprotected human instantly. The temperature is between 1 and 4 degrees C. Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard said of his dive in 1960 that the bottom was a waste of snuff-colored ooze. Surprisingly, given these hostile conditions, there is life at the bottom. Pickard saw a flat fish around a foot long on his descent, noting that the monster of steel that was surviving enormous pressures had eyes despite the perpetual darkness of its habitat. Since then, many species have been observed, including tiny organisms living in the seabed, large single-celled amoebas measuring more than 10 centimeters across, jellyfish, amphipods, and snailfish, which have even inspired a new type of soft deep sea submersible. Sadly, what can also be found at the bottom is rubbish. Scientists have found high levels of toxic pollutants in the area, and plastic bags have been found on the seabed. A new shrimp-like species found in the trench was discovered to have ingested microplastics and was given the name Eurythines plasticus to highlight the problem. There have even been proposals to dump nuclear waste in the trench, which were thankfully not carried through. Has anyone reached the bottom of the Mariana Trench? Since the British Navy vessel HMS Challenger first measured Challenger deep in 1875, but didn't hit the bottom despite having nearly 300 kilometers of hemp rope on board, there have been numerous scientific and explorative missions to the Mariana Trench. But the enormous pressures involved make it a difficult and dangerous place for humans and robots alike. So far, 12 men, yes, they were all men, have walked on the surface of the moon. Nobody has walked on the bottom of the Mariana Trench, but six people have descended to it in submersibles. In 1960, the U.S. Navy submersible Trieste made a dive with two crew on board, Jacques Picard and Don Walsh. They were able to communicate with a ship on the surface using a hydrophone, although the huge distance meant that messages took seven seconds to make the distance. For the next 50 years, only a couple of uncrewed missions would follow until Hollywood director James Cameron made his descent in 2012 aboard the Deep Sea Challenger. In 2019, Victor Vescovo made four descents, and in 2020, he returned with former astronaut Kathy Sullivan, the first woman to visit. The most recent visit to the Mariana Trench was in March 2021 by British-American adventurer and video game designer Richard Garriott, who became the first person to visit both North and South Poles orbit Earth aboard the International Space Station and dive to the deepest part of the ocean. How did the Mariana Trench form? The Earth is covered in a shell of hardened rock known as its crust. Some areas of this crust are thicker known as continental crust and forms our planet's dry land. The oceans lay in the areas of our planet covered in the thinner oceanic crust as water wants to flow down towards lower elevations. Despite being covered in a layer of quite solid rock, the Earth is a planet alive. And just like our skin grows old and is replenished, Earth's skin is in continuous motion, being formed, growing old, and finally being recycled as part of a continuous cycle. This process is powered by crust being absorbed back into the Earth's molten mantle in subduction zones, where tectonic plates converge and push under each other, while the new crust is created in rift areas, where tectonic plates move apart from one another. The Mariana Trench is formed on one such subduction zone, where the Earth's crust pushes deep into the planet's bowels. It reaches some 11,034 meters below the surface of the ocean. From a geological standpoint, the Mariana Trench forms part of the eastern boundary between the teeny tiny Mariana, tectonic plate, and the Pacific plate. The Mariana Trench is formed by the Pacific plate pushing towards and underneath the Mariana microplate. On the surface, volcanic activity caused by melting material from the Pacific Plate has created the Mariana Islands, which gave the whole area its name. We don't know for sure how old this subduction process is, 
What we do know is that volcanic activity in the area has been ongoing for at least 50 million years. This tells us that the trench is at least as old, but likely older, as subduction had to start before any volcanic activity it generated on the surface. Who discovered the Mariana Trench? The Mariana Trench is, to date, one of the least explored places on Earth. It was first discovered in 1951 by the British survey ship Challenger 2, which also marked Challenger Deep, which, at a depth of almost 11,000 meters, was the lowest known point at the time, and remained so for quite a few decades. No major exploration effort visited the depth of the site for almost one decade after its discovery. This mostly came down to technological limitations. There simply were no vehicles around that could go deep enough to explore the trench. Even then, at the height of the Cold War, the most capable submarines of the time, military submarines, were made to operate at depths of around 400 M, give or take. Although they could go deeper than that, they were not capable of withstanding the mammoth pressures at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. This pressure, measured by modern vehicles, reaches in excess of 1,160 kds of force per square centimeter, 16,500 pounds per square inch. This is over 1,000 times more pressure than we experience here on the surface. The first vehicle to explore the trench was a submersible named Trieste, manned by the famous Swiss oceanographer Jacques Picard and American oceanographer Don Walsh. The journey towards the depths of the Mariana Trench started on the 23rd of January, 1960. It took the two explorers more than five hours inside the cramped bathyscaphe to make the descent. Trieste was designed as a dual-walled sphere of metal, with a thick outer wall and a thinner pressure sphere that housed the crew. The layer between the two was filled with petrol for buoyancy. It was very much a proof-of-concept vehicle carrying no scientific equipment besides two observation ports and electric light. This trip was largely uneventful, but at around 30,000 feet, the duo heard a loud bang or cracking noise. One of the outer plexiglass window panes had cracked from the immense pressure, sending shock waves throughout the walls of the submersible. Likely unnerved but undaunted, the two pressed on, finally settling on the seafloor in snuff-colored ooze at 35,800 feet. At this depth, it took seven seconds for a message to travel from Trieste up to its support ship via a hydrophone, and another seven seconds for its reply to be relayed back. Despite the limited possibilities of the bathyscaphe, the two researchers reported seeing a new type of shrimp and a number of sole and flounder flatfish, findings which would be heavily disputed after their publication and are still not recognized as valid. It is possible that the duo mistook invertebrates such as sea cucumbers for flatfish due to their limited view and knowledge of biology. Still. Pickard chose to quickly ascend after spending only 20 minutes on the seafloor after discovering a series of cracks in the vehicle's viewing windows. The trip back up took three hours and 15 minutes. Despite the success of this mission and its popularization around the world through Pickard's written account seven miles down, its planned return did not occur. Trieste was a proof of concept and quite expensive to maintain. It was also very limited in its abilities. It couldn't collect samples, and it was virtually impossible for its crew to take useful photographs of the world outside it. Although maintenance and development continued for some time, eventually, Trieste's high cost and low return meant that it was taken out of service in 1966. It was taken to the Washington Navy Yard, where she remains on exhibit today, as part of the National Museum of the U.S. Navy. Later revisits Pickard and Walsh's voyage would, for the next few decades, remain the only time humanity had taken a peek at the depths of the Mariana Trench. By the time we returned, robots would take the front seat in exploring these crushing depths. The next few exploratory missions in the area were carried out by remotely operated vehicles, ROVs. These were two Japanese missions using the ROV Kaiko in 1996 and 1998, and the robotic deep sea probe abysmo in 2008. Then it was the U.S.'s turn to visit the trench with their Nereus in 2009, followed by the Chinese Haidu-1 in 2016 and the Russian Vityazd in 2020. The last mission marked the first time a fully autonomous robot reached the depths of the Mariana Trench. Although robots took a leading role in diving into the trench during this time, a few people did also make the journey. The first person to make the dive after Pickard and Walsh was James Cameron, 
a Canadian film director, who made a solo descent in the Deep Sea Challenger in 2012. After him, American investor Victor Vescovo braved the depths. He dived four times between the 28th of April and the 5th of May 2019 as part of the Five Deeps expedition, which aimed to visit and map the deepest points of all five of the world's oceans. With this mission, Vescovo became the first person to ever reach the Challenger Deep more than once. He would return in 2020, making a further five trips between the 12th and 26th of June. In 2020, a Chinese manned vessel, Fenduj, carried out 13 dives in the Mariana Trench as part of a test program between the 10th of October and the 28th of November. Thanks to improvements in material science, Fenduj could house several crewmen as well as sensory equipment. Ye Kong, the chief designer of the submersible, said at the time that China's goal with the mission wasn't just scientific investigation, but also to move towards deep sea seabed resource exploration. The last manned mission to the trench occurred in February 2021 with the Ring of Fire 2 expedition. After an unmanned dive, Victor Vescovo and American entrepreneur, video game developer, and private astronaut Richard Garriott made the descent as well. Garriott thus became the 17th and latest human being to dive to the depths of the Mariana Trench. Thanks for watching. To stay updated on the latest discoveries, make sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications.